This time on WAD TV, I am revealing recent headshots results from my seventh time of working with small business legends, Andrew and Pete. This time they chose to jump well ahead of the headshots trend curve so that we could create some beautifully graphical inspired headshots for them to use in 2020. See exactly how I did it on this episode. If you're new to Moi TV, then hello, you beautiful beast. I am Laura Perman, and this is Moi TV. Here, my goal is to provide you with tons of headshots ideas, as well as helping you to grow your business and your reputation the right way through headshots into the vision that you have in your wildest ambitions in your mind's eye. You should go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Make sure though, when you do that, you hit the bell. That way you're gonna get notified every single Friday when a new episode comes out. If you are always looking to keep up with the latest trends in headshots photography ideas, because maybe you work in a related field like graphic design, branding strategy, website design, styling for professionals, or commenting on the zeitgeist in entrepreneurial trends, then this episode is gonna give you a really good set of reference points, as well as a deeper understanding of the hot new graphical trend I am seeing in headshots right now. This was my 388th session since setting up my photography business eight years ago, and it was my seventh photo shoot with clients Andrew and Pete officially putting them in first place for most loyal clients ever. <laughs> hey! Before we get into today's grand reveal of the headshots results, I wanted to quickly touch on the request that Andrew and Pete gave me. They wanted to have a very particular style with their headshots this time around. What I'm loving about this headshots request in particular is that it's opened up a great excuse for me to go into a little bit more detail with you beautifuls to understand the slight subtle differences and refinements that we're seeing happening in the world of headshots photography right now, specifically in the brand aware entrepreneurial space. With this area in commerce and the business world, Photographers like me are starting to see all of these beautiful little snaps and subtle tiny little spin-offs happening within the overall aesthetic. I'm really hoping that this little trend is going to stick around for a lot longer because it totally gives me the creative sparks of a photographer. Look at what I mean, but let's do it through musicology. And we're thinking about spin-offs in certain genres. So we would never have gotten to grind if it hadn't have first been for the UK garage scene in music. And we would never have gotten that if it hadn't have first been for jungle, R&B and dance pop. And then we would never have gotten those if it hadn't have been for wider electronic music. Or you can do the same thing when you look at fashion. So we would never have arrived at the Dolly Kai look, which is actually a very specific niche style worn by Japanese girls who want to look like vintage dolls usually Victorian style or Edwardian style, if it hadn't have first been for the Lolita style, which came about as part of street fashion in Japanese culture in the 70s. Let's get back to photography. <laughs> so when we were planning out this shoot, Andrew and Pete sent me a bunch of different inspirations that they had been gathering themselves in the last few months in the run-up to the session. They had photography examples from TV shows, Time magazine covers, links on YouTube channels, as well as fashion photography from the favorite brands of clothing that they prefer to wear. This is testament to the fact that we are in a content renaissance, which gives us a much wider pool of ideas to pull from to create these cool subgenres that we're starting to see. Let's flash back in time to our shoot day. There's a trend that's been building this year and the boys want to jump on it in their headshots and it involves really sophisticated lighting. So that's why we're at a studio today. Okay, so like I said in the car, we're using a lot of equipment. This is it packed down and I'll show you packed up. Okay, I've set up some different lighting and we're gonna start um, building our lighting scape. So, straight light 
whoosh, comes out like that, a little bit of a spray. This one here is a honeycomb, so that controls the light to make it go in one like sausagey beam. This is a snoot, and that has more of a pointed effect on the way that the light comes out, like a bit like a spotlight on a stage. And then this bad boy is diffusion. So this is all about spraying the light as wide as possible, and this makes it as soft as possible. And finally, you can see here we're on a green cove because it's gonna be all about cutting the boys out later on so that they have transparent backs, but beautifully lit transparent backs. Right, Pete? That's right. Am I okay in this position? Is this? Yes. Is this okay? Yeah. Okay. Lunge into it. Okay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Welcome to the shoot. It's Andrew and Pete shoot with Laura Perman, and today we're after a more mature, sophisticated look with some really serious lighting, which is giving Laura some <laughs> headaches today. So, but I'm sure she's going to handle it. Can't wait for this shoot. It's a two-hour shoot, and we've got a whole green screen in the background there as well. So it's going to be fun. Let's do this. favorite headshots result from Andrew and Pete's quirky branded headshot session. You can do that just by commenting below now or at the end of this video. Right, that's Pete's set, first one finished. You're up, Andrew, how'd you feel? Nervous. <laughs> Nervous. <laughs> well, Pete is the poser, so I am pretty much prepping myself right now, but let's see how this goes. We can do it, we can do it. <laughs> Andrew being nervous at a photo shoot is no new thing. This has been the same way for all seven times that we've worked together. And Andrew hates the idea of posing. He gets really uncomfortable about it. But on this session, he really came into his own. I finally found the way that I can get him to pose. And that is through the art of distraction and getting him to do something that he can focus his attention on in order to make really natural, fun poses like this. Absolutely knocked it out of the park on this one. I think maybe Pete might finally have a posing contender. <laughs> As soon as we wrapped, I got Andrew and Pete to sit down and do a little bit of an interview chat with me. Make sure you stick around because that's going to be coming out next week on WAT TV. The boys are going to be talking about doubling your business, but more on that next week. I will see you then. Mwah. So we are all about thinking big with your goals. And we wanted to kind of set all of our atomic members a challenge to actually double their business. So this goes way back, before we even announced this, we put a post in the Atomic group. It must have been maybe nine months ago-ish now. And we said, guys, if you were to like really knuckle down, how quickly do you think you could actually double your business? Mm -hmm. And there was loads of different um, ranges. People were like, well, maybe in like three months, maybe in 10 months, maybe in 18 months, I, I'll never be able to double my business and like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's the challenge we want to set. We kind of looked at all of those and we said, 
what is kind of the average here, then let's do it a little bit above average. Let's say six months. Let's try to get everyone doubling their business in six months' time. Now, before you go anywhere, don't forget to subscribe. Mwah.